welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another Real Housewives of Orange County, and this is season 18, and this is episode two, and this is called Rent and Reputation. And man, the way this episode went, and before I get into the video, um, I just do want I do want to mention I'm still trying to figure out the video quality when it comes to my phone and all of that um it took me forever to upload my first couple of videos because of the quality and i had to basically dumb down the quality in order for it to load and it actually made it look worse than the quality i had before so forgive me for that and then also yeah you might see a little bit of bags here your, your girl's been struggling with the allergies um, for the past couple days and i'm also tired <laughs> So I'm going to try to knock this out and get into it. And this review should not be as long as the first one because I don't have to do as much recapping. And um, although not really as much happened in this episode. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be pretty easy to get through this. So uh, without further ado, though, let's get into the video. OK, so the episode continues where they're at Heather's um, New Year's party and, um, you know, Shannon and Alexis, they're still arguing. And Alexis storms out and then goes to talk to Heather. And really what's frustrating Alexis is like, <laughs> Shannon refuses to talk about her and talk about the John situation. She's upset about the lawsuit situation. And so that's what's frustrating Alexis. And it's clear to me, I'm, I'm not going to hold you. Alexis is not smart. <laughs> And I'm probably going to read her a couple times during this recap, but really more or less the first half, because thank God she wasn't on in the episode as much as, like, she could have been. But she is... I think she thinks she's doing more... I think... I don't know where in her logic her being the other woman or her being the new girl and being a pick-me is acceptable behavior, even though she... It's very contradictory and very off-putting and like kind of disgusting because you're like I'm a Christian but then you like say all these things are kind of raunchy and you're literally bragging about how you just banged like this woman's ex you know ex-boyfriend in front of the whole group and making sure she hears it I'm like it's just it's really it's icky behavior and I don't think anyone's saying yeah get off sis I think that's in her head she thinks that's what she's doing but no one, everyone's just like, yo, even the people who don't really like Shannon right now have Shannon's back when it comes to this because there's nothing that Alexis is doing that's making this look good. Like, she just really looks dumb. Long story less long. And the fact that Shannon is actually making a point to not even talk about that man, it makes Shannon look real good. Like, Shannon is doing, like, the way Shannon has been handling the past two episodes, she's been eating. Eating, no crumbs, eating. Um, anyway, so Alexis is like consulting with Heather about how she doesn't want to talk about it. And then Tamara lied in her confessional and said like, yeah, even though I had my issues with Shannon, I, you know, I felt bad when it came to the whole thing with how John is now dating Alexis. And then in the... In the confessional right after that, Shannon basically proved that that was incorrect. And I remember this too, by the way. She, Tamara's lying. She literally was giving a hand, like giving like a, like kind of pretty much praising Alexis all over social media, over the whole thing. Doing the opposite of being supportive, doing the opposite of saying she's feel bad. And then... Um, when Shannon, you know, reaches out to her and say like, Hey, what's that about? You know, WTF, what the fuck, you know, about that. Um, Tamara's responses grow up and it's just kind of like, you really need to tell your friend Alexis to grow up because the way she, oh. Oh my gosh, the way she's acting, I just, I just can't. So anyway, from there, we then have um, Katie and Jen are kind of just talking a little bit. Because um, by the way, 
after the fight, they're all now sitting down for dinner. This dinner looks kind of weird. They're giving me the little tiny plates and stuff. And under her, and under, while all this is happening, you know, Heather's, you know, finally presenting the dinner to everyone or lunch. I'm not sure what time of the day that they were there. Um, Gina is complaining on her breath about the whole thing next to, because she said next to Katie. And it's like, girl, <laughs> this is not going to go well. Like, and for those who don't know, Gina and Heather are supposed to be really, really close. But last season, we saw the ripplings of that and how much Heather doesn't feel like Gina is as much as good of a friend to her as she is to her, like, you know, other way around. And I think this season we're going to see it break down. But that was just a little Easter egg that we saw right there in this scene. And so anyway, then they basically commiserate after they do the toast and whatnot. And um, Katie um, and Heather has another game where they do this money grab thing. And Jen made a whole entire joke about it because... Everyone knows she's getting evicted. And I'll get, I'm going to read Jen, by the way. And I feel bad because I want to like her. And I did all last season. And she seems like a sweet person. But I can't. <laughs> you're you're going to hear some opinions that you probably won't like. So anyway, next. So Katie's talking to, so um, Jen's talking to Katie, who's a new housewife. Katie's a new housewife. And she's talking about how she's, about her getting evicted. And she basically, this is when we find out that Jen's moving in with Ryan. And honestly, she doesn't have that. She doesn't have another choice. She's either going to do that or she has to move back to her parents' house. And side note, we found out, we find out that Jen, and this is no shade, no shade. She's 46. Okay, I'm sorry. She doesn't look like she's 46. Is it the lack of melanin? I mean, if she's 46, then that means she's only six years older than me. And I, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am sorry. Maybe I'm being rude. Maybe I'm being out of turn. But like, I'm not trying to be shady, but I, child, I, I definitely am being shady right now. I'm not trying to be, though. But we find out later on this episode that she's like 46, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> I, I, I'm confused. But anyway, so basically, we find out she's moving in with Ryan. And then while this is happening, Gina is venting to Tamara and Heather about the whole situation because Gina's still really, really upset because the place that she's getting evicted from, Gina vouched for her. And we find out later on this episode, I'll just go ahead and get into it. Gina actually ended up losing 50K over this whole entire fiasco because of how that ended up not working out. Um, because when she vouched for her, basically Jen avoided, she Get the line when it came to all the things that typically someone does when it comes to renting. Like credit check, background check, all that. She got to skip it because of Gina's word and Gina vouching for her. Only for her to basically shit on her and, and basically get evicted. And I know things happen, but I think with Gina, her main problem with this is um, I think Gina's coming off as a higher than now type of personality when it comes to this whole situation. Don't get me wrong, but I think Gina's completely right. I, I agree with Gina. I just don't like how she's handling it. And we'll get into that later on in the episode. But I, she deserved an explanation before that happened. Like, if you know someone vouched for you to get a place, you need to give them a heads up before, the, before things hit the fan. And the way Gina found out was through Instagram that she was, that she was moving. And because 
Jen put on Instagram she's moving. But Gina did the math and it's like, okay, well, your lease isn't over, so you're not just randomly moving. Like, it made sense. And then because it's the industry and everything, of course she figured out that like she she got she's getting evicted. Like she didn't pay her bills. And so anyway, um Gina's Gina's really, really upset about it, but child, the way she handled it later on. <laughs> I got some thoughts on that too but um so then they end up talking about alexa alexis again because alexis um with this game where they're doing this money grabbing game um because they go basically go in a money machine and they start grabbing things but it has questions on it or has like what are you looking forward to like new year's type stuff right and alexis does this 180 she's like i would like for Shan and I to one day be friends. And <laughs> everyone's looking at her, including Shan, like, girl, what? <laughs> After she just literally has been disrespectful towards Shannon and then out of line this whole entire time during the party. Like, just being ridiculous. And the way Shannon handled it, she handled it like a G. I mean, she really did. It couldn't be, it couldn't been me. Those pillows that she has would, be, would have been gone. I would have ripped them out. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, the way she was talking, I just can't stand. Mm, I can't stand that kind of personality. Like, and honestly, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've ever liked Jesus Jug. So I think that's the other thing. I've never liked Jesus Jug. So I think she's like a pretentious bimbo. So there's that. Anyway. um, So then after pretty much all this is kind of basically getting resolved or whatever and things are happening with this party um jen approaches gina before you know the party gets wrapped up saying hey we need to meet up in the future to discuss some things and um they both agree and gina as a callback she was like i am not ruining any more of heather dubrow's parties so i'm gonna put a pin in it but I'm still very, very upset. As she should be. Especially, you know, after we know what we know now. It's messed up. And then for... And this is the thing that, that I understand why Gina's upset. But she still should have handled it a little bit better. Jen seems to not understand why she's upset. And, I, and as, some, as someone who's upset... That is like the worst feeling in the world when someone pretends why, like, it's like, Gina's like, girl, you know why I'm upset. <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about? And yeah, I will feel a way too. Like, do not pretend. Don't be like, I don't know what I did. Girl, you know what you did. Like, and then Jen tried to turn around on her. I'm, I'm skipping around a little bit. Bear with me on this one. Jen tried to turn around on her, and she even kind of did during the party and a little bit later on another scene, saying that she feels a way that G that um, Gina's talking to all the girls about her and what's going on in her life, even though it was on social media. And based off of the obvious knowledge that we know, you needed someone to vouch for you for your credit check and your background check for you to even get the place that you're in just now that you're getting evicted from. You're not going to get any place in the area unless someone does that again, which they probably won't now, or you have to move in with someone you already know. So everyone pretty much did the math figure out, oh, you're probably moving in with Ryan. It wasn't that much of a shocker. Like, and... Jen, I like Jen, but Jen, Jen, oh man. She, she's, she's not smart. <laughs> she's not super smart. There's definitely some, it, I don't know if she's sheltered. I think it might be more of a sheltered thing versus a lack of intelligence thing. But I think it's definitely more of a sheltered thing, if that makes sense. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later on, on in, the, in the episode because we're, we're going to see a little bit more here. 
Okay, so outside of that in the party, Tamara and Shannon do talk a little bit. And Tamara being just annoying and unbearable, Shannon handled that well as well. Um, Because Shannon tried to explain to her, like, dude, I'm not mad at you about the Trace Amigas thing. I'm just mad about how you handle things in general. Um, it was either her or Tamara that says it. I forgot which version. I forgot which way it was. But either way, Tamara's been... Tamara's being out of line per usual. Like, <laughs> I it's, it's rare that I side with Tamara with things. So let, well, I'm just going to say that right now. Um, and then Alexis was being like messy and even had the new girl looking at her like, girl, what are we talking about? Because the subject came up about her promise ring. She says it's a promised with the D at the end ring. Not a promise ring. They're not the same thing. And it's like, girl, it's the same thing. Like, they're arguing some semantics. And I, I think that's the main thing I've noticed with and why I can't really get with Alexis. She's a queen of some stupid semantic shit. And I, I'm sorry, I hate to just, like, call a thing a thing. But <clears throat> she is the semantics. I can't. I can't argue with someone who just does the semantics thing. I do it sometimes to just piss other people off myself if I'm arguing with you. Because then, I mean, once I'm arguing with you, I don't care. <laughs> like, I know that's messed up, but people who know me know that about me. Once you get me to the point where I'm arguing with you, I don't care. So don't, don't have me argue with you then. <laughs> it's that simple. Like, I'm definitely my sign when it comes to, like, arguments. Like, it takes a long time for me to get there. I'm not quick tempered. So that is more of a th an Aries thing where we're quick tempered, but I'm actually not. And um, I'm actually pretty even kill for the most part. But then once I get there, kamikaze. I don't even care if I take myself out of the process. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like, F it. <laughs> anyway. So that's pretty much how this scene ends. And then the next scene, which was kind of a little bit of a small side scene, we see Gina in her new element of um, she's at a listing showing potential buyers a house. And I am proud that Gina did find another, find a career within this um, job. I mean, within her being a housewife, because being a housewife is a job, but I'm glad she found a lane that's going to work for her, you know, because Everyone knows these shows are not forever, but if she could build up a decent book of business, as she was saying, this can be something that she could rely on for the rest of her life. So I'm glad she got to the real estate game the way she did. Um, but she did describe, and we'll find out, because she ends up talking to like, well, afterwards, she does end up FaceTiming or... Um, Emily ends up FaceTiming her. I'm not sure which order it was exactly. Um, about the, the gin thing. And then this is where we find out that 50k on the table gone. Because of her vouching for, um, for Jen. She kind of explained it, but I didn't really understand it all the way. Put in the comments if y'all understood what she said if you were watching the show exactly what it was that she said because she kind of brushed upon it a little bit um but i'm not a real estate person or real estate girl so i couldn't quite understand what she was talking about i i know it makes sense for those who are in the industry but i it kind of went over my head i'll be honest so in the dual scene i kind of skipped ahead in the dual scene that's what um heather and gina were sorry gina and um emily were talking about um we then have Katie, Jen, and Shannon hanging out. They're doing like a hike kind of walk thing together. And side note, I love that Shannon is really more going all in on this fitness journey. I really do think Shannon has changed. I don't think, I don't like the rhetoric and that we'll get into a little bit later. I do not like the rhetoric that Tamara keeps trying to put out there. I think she is trying I think she stumbled a couple times while she's trying, but I think she's genuinely trying, you know, because becoming, if you have, if you really do have a drinking problem or if you really do have a substance issue, it's not easy. Just quit 
even if you, you know, end up doing something that's pretty messed up, it's not, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, you wouldn't have as many, you know, you wouldn't have as many, you know, people that suffer from addiction. So I'll get into that a little bit later on while I read Tamara her rights because she, she was outlined yet again um, in the later scene. But anyway, so we find out though more about Katie and Katie um, is a travel reporter for the golf, for golf. Um, and she, that's how she met her husband. Her husband's also a traveling reporter for the golf channel. And they're both very, very much into golf, even though she doesn't play golf herself. She's golf is her life, basically. Um, we, we will get to know a little bit more about Katie later on the, in the, in the next scene. Um, but yeah, Jen, so then Katie and Shannon are asking more questions and that's when they find out that Jen is moving in with Ryan and then they ask, what does Ryan do? Ryan doesn't have a job. And this is why Jen, I look at you like you're crazy. I want to like you so much, but like, I really want you to, when you watch these shows back, like after you talk and do film the seasons, I want you to go back and, and really listen and realize what you're saying. Does that make sense to you? Because if it does, we have a much bigger problem. You're so you, so you went from a situation where a man was taking care of you. To all of a sudden, you know, then you then you did what you did and wasn't even responsible how you did that. No judgment there. I mean, I kind of already said things about it last season when I was watching it, I think, the first time. But, like, you already... So, okay, so for those who don't know, her marriage ended because she, she was cheating on her husband with Ryan. Okay. Instead of doing the right thing and just ending things before she did that. And so Gina had an issue with her last season, even about that. And I thought Gina was out lying back then because that's not her business. Um, that was just Gina being judgy. But all of us have, have, are like that at times. Myself included. I am super judgy and critical when it comes to people I have in my life. Um, more or less as a friendship st standpoint. Even though I know we're not, you know, get how you live. We're not all perfect. Things happen. I get that. But at the same time, <laughs> I hold you. I sometimes kind of side with Gina when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Um, just because I'm looking at you like there's certain behaviors. And, and, and this is me thinking about how Jen's been acting from this season to the second episode <clears throat> of this um Last season and the second episode of this season. So the, the a little bit that I so I've no I've gotten to know her all last season and then a little bit of the first two episodes of this season. And for her being forty six, which I'm not gonna say it again, but these behaviors are things that people do when they are twenty two, twenty three. That that's the main that's my main thing when I look at this. But I'm a viewer, so I can you know I'm gonna judge it because I'm be, I'm watching the show. But anyway, back to the other thing, the other major huge red flag that Ryan doesn't have a job either. So you went from a situation where you, because <laughs> the subject came up, and I forgot who who asked. Someone asked, because they keep going back to people asking her questions and grilling her, about how did she get a place that she couldn't afford? And again, that's back to Gina vouched for her. But no proof of income and being able to afford the rent. And I think it was actually um, Emily that asked. Like, why would you, because she, she was relying on someone else paying for it and not her paying for it. And it's just kind of like, 
even and this is her ex-husband who she's trying to get a divorce from she was she thought he was going to be paying for it still yeah so it only to now go in this situation where you're living with ryan who doesn't have a job either and you think that makes sense and i feel like shannon was trying so hard to keep a poker face and i think katie even kind of had a look she was like girl what because we find out later on that Kay's gonna run it back and <laughs> talk about it. Someone has to be the someone has to pick up the bone. Someone has to be a bone collector. And in this situation, I'm not mad at it because it's not making sense to me. And maybe someone someone a little bit more calmer needs to talk to her about about this next time. Um, but anyway, as you can tell, this episode is mainly about Jen and Gina. This is a very Jen and Gina um, related episode and side note y'all should gina though i will say this i will say this i haven't seen the rest of the season yet but jen's giving you something to do so you should probably be thankful that she's giving you something to do just say emily I don't know how you're still on this show. Because you, you don't bring anything other than being Gina's best friend. Honestly, I wouldn't be upset if she became friend of. I don't understand why she's not a friend of. Because I, it's episode two and you're not bringing anything. And I'm trying to remember last season. You didn't bring much last season either. You don't have a storyline. And it's really weird. Like, you literally... You didn't have any soul scenes this season. Like, first, two, there's two episodes so far she hasn't had a soul scene. I, I think she really does need to be demoted to a friend of. I mean, Bravo, if you're cutting the budget down, stuff like that. I mean, not, I don't want people to lose jobs or anything, but she really, like, realistically, she should be demoted to a friend of because she has no storyline. But anyway. Um, so next scene, we um, learn, more from Kate, learn more about Katie. Katie's adopted. So her first, I forgot what her last name is, but it's a very white last name. because She basically doesn't know her parents, her real life parents, but she's full on Korean. She's full Korean. Her oldest daughter actually does speak Korean because her oldest daughter does want, did want to be more engaged in the culture to learn more about it. And she um, ended up actually having her first daughter when she was 20. And she was so happy that she beat teen pregnancy by two years. Um, yeah. Um, and then we also find out that Katie has got has been married before, and she has um, two other kids from a previous marriage, and then she only has the one little one. I think his name was Brandon or Brandon Brandon um, from her with her current husband. We so we this is a family scene with her um, oldest daughter and the youngest, and the two boys in yeah the two boys are in San Diego with um, their. Um, they wanted to finish the semester off at their high school because I they're at their high school age, um, yeah. And we also find out though in this episode, I forgot to mention that um, Katie has met Heather before. She doesn't have an opinion of her that seems like it's pleasant because she has met Heather before at Sutton's party, and I guess Heather did this like thing where she this high thing, kind of just like waved her off type thing, and. I can't believe it, but I hope, Katie, you're not going to make this your storyline. Don't put 20 on 10 on it. Because <laughs> I saw the next episode, Sun does make an appearance, and you talk to her about it. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, but that's pretty much it with um, Katie. But so far outside of that little thing, I do like Katie so far. Um, so I'm interested in learning more about her. She seems pretty sensible, pretty um, common sense related. She seems to have a nice bubbly personality. And um, apparently we found out, though, too, later on that Emily has already met her, too, prior to them filming um, just because of Gina. Because Gina knows her and stuff. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So then the next episode, the next I'm um, seeing... We have um, Shannon, Emily, and Gina. They're practicing flag football because Emily decides she's going to put 
together flag football event because her daughter is really, really good flag football and they're playing. So they're practicing, you know, indoors and doing that. And then um, I think this scene outside of that, it was a good scene because we saw that um, Gina and Shannon had a true heart to heart about the DUI. Shannon is really showing some remorse. And she, she did open up to them that she has stumbled a couple times with having drinks, but she's trying, you know, she really is trying and see, and that for me is all I need to hear because yeah, <laughs> if you're someone who may have potentially a problem, cold turkey, yes, on paper, let's do that. But that's not, it's not easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't have it, we wouldn't have a problem with addiction. You know, let's be real here. It's it's going to be a lifelong battle, and um, Gina, you know, really, you know, really, really was there for her in this scene, and I, I loved it. I loved it, and I hopefully I don't eat my words later on. Hopefully, Gina. Because Gina did say her confessional, this is the first time where she felt like Shannon was being genuine towards her since like the beginning of the show. So that says a lot. Um, Emily was just kind of there. Because <laughs> I mean, this is why I said what I said. She really should just be friend up. But anyway, that's it on that. Speaking of Jen. So Jen and Andy are at his place. And we see that the kids are adjusting. And then we see that Jen's mom and dad come to visit them. And when I tell you that Jen, to me, this is what I'm getting from her. And, and this is why I kind of side with Gina when it comes to this. I still, I still didn't care for about, I didn't care for delivery though. That delivery was messed up. But Jen really is coming across like a 21, 22, 23 year old um, girl, but she's children. So that's what gives me kind of pause when it comes to this whole situation, because your parents are retirement age and you still, I'm sorry and and this has always been me just in general this this is definitely me i am definitely um oh you call that i'm um, projecting i'm projecting big time when it comes to this situation for those who are who've been on the channel or have known me for a little bit y'all know i have a hard time with people who are dependent as adults and they don't have any type of disability or anything like that that's stopping them other than just being, it comes off to me as entitled. I'll just say, I'm just going to say, I'm going to call a thing a thing. It comes off as super entitled to me. I, you could be nice all day long and stuff. It comes off really entitled. It doesn't come off as spoiled. It comes off as entitled. Because I actually find, I feel like I am spoiled. I know I'm spoiled. Okay. So I'm not, no slander on people who are spoiled. I acknowledge I'm a spoiled person. Like I know that. Um, if I really didn't have my parents' help, I can call them. I just don't ever do that. <laughs> I'm one of those people that never do that. Like, my parents help me when I don't ask. If anything, they force their hand to help me. I, and that's probably the main reason why my parents help me out as much as they do. And they don't even help me out that much because I moved out of state so they would stop doing that. Because when I used to live in the same state as them, it was ridiculous. They would always try to help me out when it came to things. And it really, I don't like that. I, I don't like when people help you out and you did not like, I don't know. I feel like you're giving power to like, it, to me, it comes conditional. Like it, it comes off conditional, whether it is or not. I know your parents are your parents, but like at a certain point, I'm just like, look, I've been off this umbilical cord. You don't, you don't, you don't have to help me, okay? <laughs> I'm an adult. Like, I, it, when it comes to life in general, it comes to me, I have had three jobs at one point in time to make it do what it do. I will hustle to make it do what it do. But the difference is between myself and my situations 
and Jen, I don't have any kids, okay? So I can gamble on myself all I want to. But because she has the children, it just makes me... I understand why she's actually going to her parents more because she has the children, but also at the same time, that dynamic is not a good dynamic for you to still be going to your parents. Your parents basically a retirement age. Because if we're to believe she's 46, because <laughs> I saw, because her parents were there, right? And her parents, maybe they're older adult, maybe they're older parents, maybe. Her parents look like they're like in their 70s. I don't know if they're in their 70s or not, but they look like they are. And the fact that you are having your 70-something-year-old parents bail you out. And if, and if you're going to do that, move back with your parents then and get it together. Like, it's just, I don't. I'm sorry. I kind of agree with. I hate that I agree with Gina. Because I didn't. Honestly, I don't really care for Gina. Except for this season, I'm starting to like... Last season, I was starting to like her a little bit more. And this season, I'm starting to... I'm starting to like her a little bit more. But then, towards the end of this episode, when her... Oh, when the show didn't happen, I was like, oh, old you's coming out a little bit. I don't like it. But <laughs> anyway. So, we find out the dynamic there. And... It's like, Jen just always waits for someone to save her. And... Yeah, it, it is what it is. But anyway, next. I guess I will say this one more thing. Um, I think I've shared this before on my channel, but I do have, on my mom's side of the family particularly, there's been, to me, I kind of consider it a generational curse when you're dependent on a significant other for you to basically have a fulfilled life, especially when it comes to financial standpoint. I have a friend that I've been trying to get her to get out of that as well, too. A close, close friend. I have an ex-roommate that I actually end up cutting off because I just, it triggers me. That is one of those things. And again, I've had years of therapy talking through it. It's just one of those things that will always trigger me. I always will feel a way about it. I just, I'll be damned if someone has control over my destiny like that, other than me. And, 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 and my ancestors and the God above or universe and all that. Those are the only factors. <laughs> but another person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I mean, I think I've shared this before. I actually was in a relationship where I was kind of leaning more towards the kept side of things. Like there was a significant difference in income. And I couldn't take it. I could not take it. I, it literally felt like I was dying inside every single day being in that relationship. Because I'm just, that's not my personality. I can't handle it. So I tried it. And I mean, it, it could have worked. It probably could have worked if, if I had that in me. But I ain't got it in me. I am a very independent person. I need to be able to pay for my things. Or find a way to pay for my things. So I can do what I want. Like, I I don't know. And then you lose a job. We both have a job now. Now what? Like, <laughs> I can't. Those are things that I, I can't get behind. And the fact, and to me, when it comes to this gin situation, sorry to bring it back, but like, you didn't know that your rent was not being paid? That's what gets me about this whole gym situation. How do you not know that your rent's not being paid? What? I don't even understand how that works. And for those who've been married, maybe y'all can explain that to me. I think my ex-roommate tried to explain this to me too. I just don't have that personality. Even when it came to when I was kept, I was asking all the questions and, and I was asking questions to make sure things were being paid and everything was everything. And I felt so guilty. I was actually making myself more broke trying to pay for things because I just can't handle that. My ego will not allow that. <laughs> I'll just be honest. Maybe my ego is a little too big. I don't know. 
I just will not. I can't. No, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. In the, word, in the words of Jocelyn, I cannot. Jocelyn Hernandez. Anyway, <laughs> so next we have the showdown, which wasn't that long of a showdown, of um, Shannon and Heather. Long story less long, they're going to try for the upteenth time to be cordial and build a friendship. We'll see how long this goes. I honestly think this time it might work as long as Shannon stays sober. Because I think a lot of Shannon's issues was her spiraling all the time. And I think a lot of her spiraling had to do with her and the alcohol. I think she's one of those people that probably shouldn't drink ever. And you can kind of see when people are like that. Um, so anyway, I think, so, um, that's pretty much what happened there. There wasn't too much to that. And then the next thing after that, Emily, Gina, and Katie, um, meet up and Katie literally tells <laughs> Gina everything that Jen said and Gina is just getting fired up. <laughs> so we already know what's about to go down when G Gina and Jen meet up. Because, <laughs> and then we also have Emily who's there in the background, per usual, because again, friend of, huh, she, she's basically, you know, kind of agreeing with Gina and all that, because Emily ain't got no storyline. But anyway, that's pretty much what happened there. And then, dun, 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 the final scene is Gina and Jen meeting up and child. It was a train wreck. <laughs> so they meet up at a coffee shop and Gina's there first and has, you know, her things. And then Jen shows up. Gina calls out the, the obvious. She literally calls out what I mentioned last week. Jen's like, so Gina's like, so you couldn't pay your rent but you can afford glam. And it looks like you're wearing expensive looking clothes. Which, rumor has it, allegedly, because it was called out last season, that might be fake designer. But, which, it's not okay to do, number one. Number two, though, fake designer is still expensive. <sighs> but, like... Gina called out the obvious, but I will say this. I'm about to give Jen a little bit of bell because the way she did read Jen, the way Jen confessional, confessional gangster read Gina during the showdown, I'm about to give her a little something. Although she's going through her hardships right now, right? she's going through a divorce and whatnot. And I, again, I, I live with someone who was going through a divorce. I kind of went through a similar situation when I moved from the burbs to the city. It wasn't quite a divorce, but it definitely was a whole entire start over. I ended up getting a whole bunch of random side jobs with my full-time job. because My full-time job was not paying enough. And I did what I need. And I took out money out of my um, retirement account to make it do what it do. But I was going to make it do what it do. And we're good now. We're, we're Gucci now, but man, <laughs> I, I made it, I made do what it do though. You know, I couldn't imagine doing that if I had kids though. If I had, if I had kids, I would move back to my parents' house. No questions asked. And I still would do what I did. I still would probably have multiple jobs. That's just how, that's just how it went. But anyway, um, but Gina calling out the obvious about her having the glam. I agree. She shouldn't have the glam. But she still should make sure she looks nice. You know, that's important. That's important for your self-esteem. I get that. Um, and also, when you are going through your hardships, it's not realistic expectations to just cut everything off that you're used to. You know? Like, one of the things that I had for myself when I started all over was I still was going to make it where I am still able to go on vacation. Even though I was building myself back up, I still was going to make sure I had the money to, you know, go on vacations. But you know how I did that? I 
had multiple jobs to make sure I did that. I worked, I was working 80 hours a week for like almost a year straight. I was like, you know what? We're going to hustle. <laughs> We're going to get ourselves out of the hole. And then I got myself promoted. Like not once, but twice to make it do what it do. And then once I got the second promotion, I didn't need the second job. But that's, that's what I did to make it do what it do. Now I technically got promoted a third time, um, a couple years later, but yeah, I, <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta, if you do want to have the good times, you know, you gotta work. You do, you do have to work. But it is unrealistic to say you're not going to have any pleasures in life. And you're just going to slave over and that's it. Yeah, of course, I'll get done a lot quicker, but you're going to be miserable. And it's going to seem like the expectations are not realistic expectations. Um, now, my trips I was taking wasn't ridiculous trips. I made it. I, I, I learned how to basically do trips on a budget. You know, now my trips are a little bit nicer because I can afford a little bit nicer. But at the time, I knew I knew my limit limitations. I budgeted. I planned the trips almost like six months to a year in advance. Um, even when it came to my running and running races, I would always pay for the early bird. I would wait when things first. Like, I would budget. And even to this day, I still even... My, my vacations are nicer, but like when it comes to everything else, my day to day, I've, I've, I've stuck with it. And I feel like a lot of people in general, um, you know, that's tough to do. That is not an easy thing to do. I did it because in my head, I had back in my head, I'm not moving back home. I made myself a promise, a mental promise years ago when I finally moved back Cause I had, I, I, I my twenties was rough. <laughs> okay. And in my twenties, I moved in and out of my parents' house multiple times. And my last time where I moved, lived in my parents' house, I made it a goal and a point to say, I will never see this place past 30 and not in the way of like, you know, dying or anything. I'm not, I'm not going to be living with my parents past 30. They can be living with me as in me taking care of them. But it's never going to be the other way around. And I said that to myself. And I manifested that in so many ways. So when things did not go as planned. You know. I sabotaged the engagement or whatever. Because I, I knew it wasn't the right decision for me. I gambled on myself. I took the opportunity. And I was like this is the time. I wanted to live in a major city. I'm right over here. Put on your big girl panties and make it do what it do. And I know not everyone has that mentality in them. And this is something I was literally talking to a friend about this last, like on Wednesday. I was literally talking to my friend about this on Wednesday because he's just like, you got to be compassionate. You, you got to realize that everyone's like that. I'm like, I get that, but I just have a tough time like understanding it because I don't know. And I understand why, because most people are cool being comfortable. Comfortable is better, like comfortable and happy. People get confused because sometimes you can be comfortably happy. But like a lot, most people are just comfortable. Most people are not necessarily happy. And it takes a lot of self-work to figure that out. But if you have kids and all these other circumstances, where do you have time for self-work? And I, I have, and I know that these are things I know but I still have this judgmental side of me that's like, what are we doing? Similar to Gina. This is why I brought this all up. Because Gina, girl. <laughs> girl. So Gina doesn't even let Jen sit down well and starts reading her for filth. And just will not let her talk. And just like, why did you get evicted? Why did you get evicted? Why did you get evicted? Get a job. Get a job. Like, she literally sounds ridiculous. Like she sounded like the, the, and this is what gets me when it comes to this. Gina 
is absolutely correct in how she's thinking to a certain degree. But the problem with Gina and the problem that we've always had with Gina, and, and, and I, that I feel like a lot of viewers have, she takes it too far. Now you're putting 20 on 10. I get you're upset. And I'll be really mad at her too. Because what Jen did, which is sneaky, she does this. I'm, I'm learning this is the second season where I've seen this with her. There, there's a pattern. I am noticing it. Um, she likes to like, she does this innocent thing. Like, what did I do? And I can't stand people who do that. <laughs> when they know they did something messed up. In her case, she knows that she got herself evicted and did not give honestly before she got evicted she honestly should have given gina the heads up that that was going to happen outside of her being your realtor and you bringing her in your business no absolutely not you shouldn't have told you wouldn't tell her i get that and also the fact that you guys are castmates on this show I get why Jen wouldn't tell her that, but at the same time, that was on you for going to her and bringing her in your business. You brought her in your business by using her name to vouch for you. If you wouldn't have did that, you wouldn't have been in this mess. And that is the thing that Jen seems like that's a pattern of hers with. Like... She has this divorce that isn't ending, but she's a reason for this divorce. She gets evicted, but she's a reason why she's getting evicted. So Gina's right. It's just how Gina's going about it. She's putting 20 on 10. She wouldn't let her talk. And then... <laughs> Jen in the confessional was just like, just because my life is falling apart doesn't mean my hair needs to fall apart like your hair did when your life was falling apart. And then the confessional, when she said that, it showed all Gina's like ratchet, ugly looking like hairstyles that she's had throughout the years and on the show. I was like, oh, <laughs> but long story lost less long. This, but it ends where basically Jen was never, ever able to explain herself. Or apologize or nothing. Gina stormed out of there, called her a piece of ish, and then as she's doing all that, she's like, she's stupid. She stu she basically pulled a Tamara. She reacted like Tamara would react, and I'm sorry, I be you shouldn't be talking to anyone like that. I, I don't understand why she did all that. I get why because of 50k. Yeah, she cost her 50k, so I'll be upset too. But there's still a way, like, I guess Gina's not realizing her flying off a handle like that is not a good look for her as a realtor either. <laughs> I'm just like, you got to make it make sense. You can't have it one way or the other and not the other. You, you know... <laughs> but anyway... That was how, how the episode ended, and I think this is going to be a good season. I, I am enjoying watching it so far, but anyway, that does conclude the show or the episode for today. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye!